You're a 5'10". You are. Right now, you are a 5'10 post. Long tab no see there, Chipper Lips. What's going on, everybody? Jay Hayes here to say I'm doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. So this is the first time that I've ever heard of a high-end RDA, and this company is known for high-end, to actually utilize mesh. It's not the typical type of mesh that you would buy for like the profile RDA. It's a very, very meticulous cut. Old school, back in the day, what you would do is you would take stainless steel, because it came in squares, and cut a slit in it, and then you would roll it around a toothpick or something, and then that's what you would use as a wicking element before cotton. So you would have these really long stainless steel mesh type wicks for lack of a better term and then you would wrap your coils around that and that's how it would get saturated that has since died down and for anybody that doesn't know what i'm talking about guys listen i can't make this shit up that's what genesis atomizers were they've kind of died down a lot and it's essentially been swapped out for what rdtas are known as today i always get this company fucked up i think they're french Always, every time, every time with this company. This company is called Athea, named after the gentleman that owns it, Vincent Athea. And there's only been one other thing that I could think of that I've done a review for that was by Athea called The Insane. And it was literally that. That thing was amazing. Kind of right before the whole Typhoon series, little tank on the top, little mini jammy. There's a couple of people that post it, and they're very, very readily available. It's not like they're super rare. Anyway, long story short, then I got like the IMAX or something, which is the RDA that has the weird stick in the center, which is designed for mesh. This company clearly has something for mesh. Kind of pumped up about this. This is called the Black Belt RDA. Comes with different mesh accessories, different metals, and it comes with two different caps, Ultim and Black. There is no stainless steel that I'm aware of as of right now. And the two caps that come with this are not metal. They're plastic, Delrin or Ultim. So without further ado, let me bring this down. Let me show you everything inside of the box. This should be fun because this is a very, very unique situation that I don't think I've ever been in before. The only thing that I could think of that even resembles this in the slightest would be the Profile RDA. The only difference is, is that uses a very big piece of stainless steel mesh or canthal or whatever, and then you put the cotton in versus this it wraps around the whole diameter of the inside of the RDA, and then you stuff your cotton in there. It's quite a unique situation. The amount of cotton that you're going to need to wick this, better get your bag of cotton out because it's about to get serious. So without further ado, Athea Mods Black Belt RDA. Let's flip it. Black Belt packaging by Athea. There's really nothing going on on the outside of this, so let's just open it up. Gonna have a little sticker right here on the front, pop that up, and then you're gonna be presented with a little compartment which is gonna house your dripper with the Ultim cap in it. Gonna get a black cap and then a bunch of extra baggies. So let me explain what we got going on here. Very rarely will you see any kind of high-end RDA come with anything, whether that's mesh, coils, it just is not a thing. Unlike most high-end RDAs, they usually don't come with any kind of coils. However, this came with different styles of mesh. What you have is a Nichrome 80, just two strips. All you're gonna need is one. It also comes with this lovely block of stainless steel. This is how old school wick would be. Then you would cut it out. And I think 400 would be 400 by 400, which is the size, I have no idea what measurement that is. Nanometers? I don't even think that's a thing. But then you get 200 by 200, and then apparently the higher up you go, the smaller the holes are inside of the mesh. I may be very incorrect there. And then of course there's Canthal, which is what I am interested in. So I'm going to be using one of these strips inside of this little Ziploc baggie. Again, I can't say I've ever seen any kind of dripper that was high-end come with any kind of coil or mesh or... And again, this is really the first mesh RDA I've ever seen. Black cap that is in this, I'm not 100% sure if it comes by default, but I do have this. And then of course, the actual RDA itself. Black belt by Athea. 
unscrew this, there's the dripper. Inside the little dripper tube, you're gonna get a Ziploc baggie, which is gonna have a bunch of extra O-rings, really nothing too crazy here. This is the RDA, you can see there is a lot of different airflow configurations. Basically, there's these little slits and notches cut all on the inside here, and that's how you're going to adjust the airflow. Because this is mesh, they're trying to target the whole area of mesh for you to get airflow. Just as Black Belt by Athea, I'm not 100% sure as to what that is. I'm assuming that is the negative post for what's inside. And of course, there's a squonk pin located on the inside there. The design of this is very, very unique. I can't say I've ever seen anything like it. You have all these different ports here, which is when you squonk, your juice is going to go through there and onto the cotton. And they're very, very large. And I'm assuming the reason why they're so large is because of how much juice needs to come out of that to fully saturate that. And the way it's really designed is very simple. You just kind of unscrew this, you put part of the leg here, and then you wrap it around in a circular fashion and then just kind of go right to here and ground it out. When you wrap the mesh around here, you have to be very careful that the mesh that you put around this negative block, that it doesn't come anywhere near this. What they could have done to alleviate that is put like a little ceramic plate on the inside there, or I really don't have any other kind of recommendation aside from that, because that's something I see would be a problem. Now, what is really cool is this little piece of acrylic on the inside here. It almost seems like it's just an additive feature, like, okay, we got this little dunce cap inside the dripper. No, no. What that is, is when you drip down this and you're not squonking, it's going to roll off that and get on the cotton. It's a very nice touch. I have no idea how that comes out, but uh, that's nice. You have this screw on the side, which is going to be flathead, and it's knurled on the sides. So you see what happens? As I unscrew this, it kind of backs out this plate. The cut of the line is just to show you that that's belong. <laughs> on the top of the Black Belt Mesh RDA by Athea out of France. Let me show you some vapor production. We're working with a 0.49, watts with the Canthal strip of mesh. It's a lot of freaking airflow. I don't know if you guys have seen my profile RDA and I really hate to compare this to that because they are on two different separate entities all by itself. Now the profile RDA I thought was phenomenal. Great flavor, great vapor production, even the mesh wasn't that bad. The problem I have with this is the problem that I used to have with mesh all the time is you get a very, very awkward burn. This is wicked right. There's no other way to wick it. I've looked at this underneath the camera and of course putting a build in it, making sure that all surface area of the mesh is actually packed very, very tight with the cotton. There's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna argue this and say you should have put the cotton first and then wrap the mesh around. First off, if you remember correctly, it was very difficult for me to put the mesh in with nothing in it. So if I had to squeeze some shit around it, nope. Now, the cool thing is the mesh that this comes with, I'm not 100% sure if they sell extra mesh, but if you do pick this up and you do have the option of getting extra mesh, then I absolutely recommend it. Finding Canthal mesh is extremely difficult, and I would have to say that that's the most least popular one out of all of them, stainless steel probably being the number one. I like how low profile this is. I like the machining of it. I love the innovation of how it wraps around and it's got the little, like, I don't know what you want to call it, post? For the negative, everything about this on paper is amazing. Everything about this before you build it is amazing. The airflow on this is so extreme 
I never thought I would see the day where a high end has this much airflow. Of course you can dial it down and cut each one of those brackets off by however much you want to turn it by. There's nothing that locks the cap in. However, unlike most strippers to where you could shut off one coil or you could shut off one side, with this you really can't do that because all airflow needs to come in and hit that mesh in all locations. Otherwise, the mesh is just not going to get proper ventilation. Now, I get good vapor production off of this. There's no denying that. Let me show you another hit after I get this cotton out of my fucking mouth. Here we go. Cotton mouth. You know, and that little clear, ooh, that flavor is good. And that little clear ball that they have on the top, listen, it's sad because I would love to use this device a lot more than what you're going to see me use it as. I would have been much happier with a stainless steel cap, but I do get that that would jack up the price that much more. I do believe the way that I got this was by getting on a list and actually being selected with a randomizer, just like old school way of high end. Because this is mesh, and if you're going to be squonking with mesh, be advised, the amount of cotton you're going to use is exponential, exp exponentiary, penitentiary. It's a lot. The amount of juice you're going to use is even more than the cotton you're going to use. Because every two, three hits with this, you have to re-wet it. There's nothing you could do. The good thing is, is if you do have this on a squonk model, you, you don't want to use it as a squonk. You can use it as a dripper. And because of that ball configuration, the way that the center post is configured, and I probably should have showed that on camera, you're not going to be too worried about juice rolling in there and saturating and getting inside of your mod. It's not designed like that. That's the purpose of that little ball. Sort of like how the juice goes up, hits the ball, then trickles down, if that makes sense. Think of a mushroom and then underneath the mushroom. Or, okay, you're a post right now. You are. You're a 5'10". You are. Right now you are a 5'10 post. Put an umbrella above your head. That's basically what you got going on. I don't feel like that's a good representation of what we're talking about here. It doesn't really matter. You get the idea. So you are able to use this without swapping out the pin. And I find a lot of high ends are doing this now. They're not including any kind of pin. They're not, no stud to fill it. I guess it makes it that much easier. If you're only gonna have one 510 pin, what happens with a lot of these companies is they have to be innovative with the post in the center. Just because of, well, it's open and the last thing you want is juice to roll off, get inside the squawk pin and go all on the inside of your mod. But, What's really cool is it forces the companies to say, what can we do to get the juice to go through the squonk pin, juice it up, but if they decide on not using a squonk, let's make it so the juice doesn't go inside the mod. That's nice. That's super nice. Now it's time to get the squonk this. Really good flavor too. A lot of airflow. Like a lot. It's just hard for me really to stand by this and recommend this. As far as putting a regular coil in this would be so difficult and terrifying. You would have to, first off, use regular round or a very, very small fuse clap then and kind of wrap it around the negative, but you don't have anything really to pinch it aside from that little clamp. Oh man, putting a regular coil in this would not be easy and it would not be fun and that's not what this is designed for. If you want to experiment a little bit with mesh, you really want to go outside of the boundaries and you're ready to graduate from the Profile RDA to something like this, where the strips that you buy from this company are pre-cut. Other than that, if you want the strips, you're going to have to cut them yourself. You can do the same thing with the Profile, it's just that this is much more expensive than the original Profile. I hate saying this because I hate comparing non-high-end to high-end but I would have to say that the Profile RDA functions a lot better than what this does. And that kind of saddens me to say that because you would think for the price point that this is at, I would be having a miraculous, great time right now. And it's not like it's horrible. It's just not like, whoa, I gotta do this. I really like the innovation. If I had to rate this drip on a zero to 10, I'm gonna give it a six. I maybe would go 6.5 if there was a way to actually use regular wire in this. I just don't see how you would or why you would because of all the airflow that would be going around that coil would be entirely too much. So only mesh. That is it. And if you love mesh, you might love this. If you don't love mesh, I don't recommend you to buy this because that's all you got. And I've kept it real. Have you?
Jane's out.